Okay. Hosted. What's all that? Steam. Remy Cam. Remy Cam, because she's the only thing on it that that's as close as I can get. Because the cord is short. Uh, yeah. He appeared to have food, and I hate him yesterday. Yep. Dang it, I always do this. Cords get entangled. Bah. Oh, good. Atomic power robot sees me. So that confirms that I am on in a meaningful way. I need more drink. Something just arpeggiated downward. What? Something on or near your desk just arpeggiated downward. That was probably my tablet. Starting up. Sounds like more of a shutdown time. Should I have it arpeggiated upward? Well, that, that's the, uh... I am plugged in sound. Okay. Right. Bridge. Ow! Blech.
having serious struggles back there were distracting me from my own. Crazy <laughs> issues. All right. So, hello, Internet. It is 4.11 p.m. on Monday, April 13th, 2020. Happy Easter Monday. Uh, today... Oh, wait, yeah, uh, I'm Mark Amstrad, DJ Amstrad, and I'm holding court. That leg and foot that you see over there is Daniel in that waving hand. He's working from home, of course. And so we'll only be here peripherally, but you will be hearing from him. Plus he swears. <laughs> but not the usual kind. Indeed. Well, usual for you. So today I'm going to be continuing, probably finishing uh, Dishonored Death of the Outsider. It it feels like the end approaches. If this isn't the end, I'll be very confused because I have no idea where they where they would go from here. This this feels like it's building to a climax. Yes, what's it smell like? Uh, it smells like a silver mine. What does that smell like? I don't know. Silver mine sounds like it would have its own special set of tailings built near a certain scent profile. Just showered. Why does my face itch so bad? You showered too hard and robbed yourself of precious oils. Mm -hmm. Now the itching begins. It's best to avoid touching it. Just let the oil ooze back out. But it's on my face. That's where the oil needs to be. The problem is that it's not on your face. That would make things worse. <clears throat> if it got into your nose and eyes, yes. Babies crying for food. Full ones, little ones. Sounds complicated. Oh wow, that that goes a long way down. But why does it terminate in light instead of getting darker and darker the further it goes? That doesn't make sense. It's an abandoned mine. It's like white light. Maybe something's very on fire. <laughs>
ancient translation and linguistics. It's a pity. I wouldn't praise him too loudly if he violated the highest commandment of our society. The ritual code is clear to us, as you well know. I understand his punishment. He had to die, I don't dispute that. But his work... There are things that even those such as we were never meant to gaze upon. Remember that. Forbidden. Could be worth looking into. He sleeps and dreams of the heart of it all. We lack the language to express the void in all its complexities. We have no words for its beauty. There is the rich, velvety darkness of the depths of the ocean, the hollow hues of the sky on a starless night, the cold color when you close your eyes to moonlight, the mottled pigments of a bruise on, on tender skin, the sharp black at the corners of your vision as you faint from exhaustion, a crumbled anointment of old blood, your own face reflected faintly in a dark glass. I was ignorant of these delicate gradations when I first arrived, but the eye of the dead god has penetrated my senses and opened my mind. What was once a dull gray has revealed its subtle luster. In my former life I was a painter. I captured the blush of a young debutante's cheek or the turn of a noble's shapely calf. I was paid vast sums to render the most insipid, lifeless, aristocratic faces into grand examples of virile splendor. But nothing I had ever seen compares to the grace and color of the void. <laughs> oh, I need to take my pills while I remember it. Drugs on stream. Drugs. Twelfth hearths. It has begun. When I woke this morning, my shoulder felt stiff and insensate, and when I inspected it, there was a thread of pure silver stone running across my fret. Fresh? Flesh. At last, I am merging with the void. Oh, to be removed from this reality and exist eternal in the next. To see the subtle shifts and patterns of the void. <coughs> to be closed off from all contact with the lesser creatures. I am eager to see its progress. <laughs> 24th Clans. The stone spreads. I feel it humming with heat as it encloses my very heart. Sometimes I am breathless with it. I can barely listen to the others. At times my tongue won't move for hours, and I am mute. Second Nets. My left eye has been entirely subsumed by the void. I can see strange shifts in the light, but it is mostly endless darkness. I find it difficult to focus on my work. Eleventh Darkness. My pen slips from my hand even as I try to write these words. 
My fingers have grown cold and numbed to all sensation. Some have even fused together in an amalgam of stone. I am exalted. Well, they're, they're all kind of, uh, turning in various stages of this process. Let's see, what does that new one do? Gah. <laughs> oh, I missed a bone charm down there. Wait, is that the same place? I don't think that's the same place that I just was a minute ago. That's in there. Oh, I need a key. Where will I find a key? Someone must have a key. Oh, hey, I didn't notice that before. is coming out here. To see there are reality, several of them. finally, to see beyond this pale. Dang it. Spotted. Hmm. 
It started with hallucinations. Juana Gallardo screaming when her husband... When her husband? When her house... Vanished as she unlocked her front door. Miners returning from the depths with hair-raising tales of tunnels appearing, already quarried and cleared beneath their pickaxes. But soon the entire town was awash with the unexplainable. The first time I hallucinated, I was working in the Shindari Mining Company's store, distributing supplies to prospectors fresh off the carriages from Karnaka. I pulled a head lantern from the shelf and turned to hand it to a customer, but he was gone. The shop was gone. I was standing alone in a dust-swept street amid tumbled ruins. It was North Quarry Town, but different, as if decades had pressed it into the earth. I blinked and the vision dissipated. I was left befuddled, staring at a curious customer. Soon all of North Quarry started flickering in and out of existence. Talk to a friend and they'd disappear mid-sentence, roll over in your bedroom and wake under starry skies. We lost sense of what was real and what was illusory, and it worsened the town disappearing for days while we camped in caves and spoke in hushed voices. It became unbearable. One by one, my neighbors fled to Colero, Bastillion, anywhere but Shindari. Soon, I was the only one left, wandering the deserted streets alone. I'd gone half mad with loneliness, roaming mine shafts deep into the mountains, when I stumbled upon a giant eye. It seemed to hum with power, beckoning me. And when I touched the eye, understanding exploded within me. The invisible layers of the universe were laid bare to me. I left the minds a wiser woman, Shindari's secrets a mystery no more. I witnessed no more vanishings. Forever after, the town remained stone solid for me. Things off. I don't like that. <sighs> I just need to make sure. This has certainly resolved itself a lot more easily than I expected that big cluster of NPCs to do.
stone hard. She's bad. For his teeth. Oh, no. Landed too hard and made a sound. A voice for the silence, a face for the terror, a body for the darkness, a wound for the wanting, a knife for the knowing, a hold for the hollow, a truth for the seeker, a charge for the warden, an eye for the eyeless. Finally got someone to lay down in bed properly.
Oh, wait, I th thought this was a thing, but no. That's just... That's nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Thank you. something down there. What must it feel like to bathe in the energies of the void for so long? What must they know? What? Someone asking for trouble. Damn it. I did not expect them to turn around and see me. Of course there's someone right there to stop me. Sneaky bastard. Oh ho, that's helpful. It wasn't a dead end. I mean, where I was looking was a dead end, but the whole thing was not. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. 
seminars? Surely you must, it's essential. The envisioned broke apart the gate to the ritual hold to maintain the order of our existence. And the pieces exist outside of the passage of time. It is the basis of our semiotics. Thusly, all meaning flows from this state of within and without. Yes, my work focuses on this foundational act. The exclusion of the outsider is necessary to maintain the hermeneutics of the self. What is us, what is they, without the outsider, to create that distinction? Have you encountered Camilla Corre's latest work? There is always the problem of framing, of delimitation. Do these distinctions make communication possible or impossible? Interesting theory. Corre? Oh, that she would question that. What nonsense.
Any child knows the constellations above the Isles. The captain at the helm, the tusked leviathan, the vain duchess, the scaled he-goat, the moth king. Tales older than the outsider himself, patterns read long ago by the fearful and the ignorant to create meaning from the emptiness that engulfed them. The supposed significance of one's birth in relation to these signs is a common folk tale. Those born under this or that set of stars will be lucky or obedient or stubborn or proud. This is, of course, simple superstition. But what may be read in the but what may be read in the stars is of greater substance than the fortunes of the unimportant masses. The night sky foretold the necessity of the outsider and urged the envisioned to seek out the wretch who would become him. It is not simply the movement of these distant stars, but when they blink out into nothingness that tells us what the void requires. Alongside the migration of birds and the entrails of certain animals, the disappearance of several prominent celestial lights urged the ancient envisioned to take a helpless orphan and create the outsider from his wretched flesh. Mm-hmm. Clearly a predecessor group to the Isles, but it sounds like an opposite to them. <laughs> Despite the, difficult, uh, despite the difficulty, we have managed a general study of the observable hollows, if so, as some have called them. The anomalies and their provenance still baffle us. These flaws in reality are imperceptible to those who have only recently joined us in our seclusion. Extended communion with the eye is necessary before anything of this nature is revealed to us. Does the eye know? Does it share this knowledge with us so that we might understand their nature? If so, what else might dead eyes see? These ritual, uh, these, my brain skipped a line there, like mid-line. These confluences of the void show us the possibilities of time. As the ritual hold is outside of time's reach, are we bound up in the strands of several divergences? It may be there are things still beyond our sight. We who watch the world align itself to our desires. Are we to witness the end of time as we understand it? Oh, but someone noticed that time. There are people over there. Well, at least I don't have eyes. Doesn't mean they can't see.
much more specific than that. Inside the ritual hold, meeting the outsider face to face. His black eyes, his youthful form untouched by time. I read. which recount our forebears walking with the outsider in dreams. One even vividly described him inviting her to suckle blood from the wound the envisioned inflicted upon him centuries ago. I wouldn't believe such accounts. They're based on poor scholarship, mystical ramblings at best. Set these wonderings aside. We know the nature of the outsider. There is only one place where he exists in the flesh, and it is forbidden to us. Still, it's tantalizing to think about, I mean. I know what you mean. Oh, Jesus. That's not what I wanted to do. which recount our forebears walking with the outsider in dreams. One even since this spot should be safe for now. I'm going to go pour myself some drink. I know I could pause, but dialogue weird. They're based on poor scholarship, mystical ramblings at best. Set these wanderings aside. We know the nature of the outsider. There is only one place where he exists in the flesh, and it is forbidden to us. Still, it's tantalizing to think about, I mean. I know what you mean. Good, good. 
let's not telefrag the lady this time. Definitely seems like the way forward, and there are big chunks of this place that I haven't explored yet. Four of them. If I can chip away at them from a different way around. about that clock going off at all.
Remigio, our referencing system needs to be reviewed as soon as possible. Bibliographical inconsistencies have been noted in several recent works which make study and citation difficult. Some of the older texts have been gnawed at by rats and need to be rebound. Make sure there's no mold in the pages before removing the damaged binding. The mines can be damp in unexpected places. Also put down more poison. First lot is clearly not working. Have the latest accounts of sanguine infusion, been, uh, sanguine infusion use been sent to us? It is needed for our research. Repeated use of these infusions seems to have a deleterious mental effect alongside prolonged contact with the void. It is of great interest. We must compare long and short-term consequences. One of the Eyeless in Karnaka has smuggled a letter along with the shipment of texts and provisions. It was examined and burned. Its intended recipient is unknown, but it appears to be from a loved one. We will find out for whom it was written, and deal with them accordingly. For now, direct the Eyeless to seek out the smuggler, and the loved one. First Librarian, Servanero. We must consider, then, the possibility of the Outsider's own agency in these encounters. Does the Void itself direct his attentions, or does the boy the envisioned submerged into the other, into the ether of that place so long ago, still retain a portion of his memory, his conscience, and, indeed, his desires? If we must entertain this thought, then we must also radically restructure our approach to the Void and its lonely denizen. For surely it is alarming to consider. If the outsider speaks, why does he not speak to us? He has never conversed with a member of our society, let alone bestowed any favor. Yet we, in all the isles, know the truth of his creation, and are his wardens in the void. So why, then, does he so often appear to the ignorant and miserable, the wronged and the hurt? What knowledge does he seek? What does he hope to gain by traversing the dreams of these people, or by granting them such abilities as to allow them to change the circumstances of their lives? I am afraid, as always, that my research has left us with more questions than answers. Take my place among them in that cold, cold darkness. I, I know this is gibberish, but looks like it says oopsie. I mean, not quite. There's extra lines and stuff there, but. So, Chris, I'm wrong. He's envisioned to found their positions beyond the inner veil. Still there? Are they even human anymore? of the void for so long. Off. Oh, I don't like that. 
Nope, nope, that didn't work. is one taken care of. Which brings this down to four, which makes it a lot easier to handle. <coughs> Every time. I didn't imagine that.
Perhaps the most well-documented, yet also the most dubious, of the Outsider's visitations are his encounters with the men and women of the Abbey of the Everyman. Aside from vague descriptions of temptations which the Overseers and Oracular Sisters both attribute to the Outsider's presence, there are cases of Outsider visitations in this category which merit our attention. The first is the bloviating account of the confrontation between the Outsider and High Overseer Francis Perry. It is maintained that the outsider assumed the form of a large serpent and attacked the High Overseer in his chambers. I must stress the falsity of this story. The outsider's physical form exists bodily in the void and does not, as we know, shapeshift like a trickster from some fanciful tale. However, turning to the confessions of an excommunicated oracular sister by the name of Romana Kaim, we find, it, we find a plausible tale. She recounted a dream in which the outsider appeared to her and, understanding the circumstances of her wrongful conviction of apostasy, offered her a gift. This was rejected. The next morning she was branded and turned out into the streets. It is a rare enough tale, but one which varies only in the tone and enthusiasm of its narrators. Select few are, th uh, through dreams or contact with shrines, transported to the void and converse with the outsider himself. Some, it is said, walk away from these encounters with his favor. Naturally, it is difficult to untangle reliable accounts from the ramblings of desperate seekers of the outsider's attention. Nevertheless, an analysis of these events is warranted. Excuse me. The Abbey of the Everyman warns that the outsider walks among them, but to them he is merely the stranger who tempts you to infidelity, or the pickpocket who robs you of trinkets. Only the barest understanding of the truth exists in their foolish litany. We of the eye know where the outsider truly lies. However, if these stories are to be believed, then we must question the extent of his power in the void. Does he choose these dialogues consciously? What is the nature of these conversations, if indeed they are intelligible? What is his physical nature in these moments? These are the questions I attempt to answer in the chapters that follow.
There we go. The most common dialogic interactions recorded with the, or, with the outsider are conjurations occurring at one of the many shrines to him constructed across the aisles. They are considered, like all things of interest, heretical by the abbey and are forbidden from public view. These simple altars, often made of wood, wire, and other materials found close at hand, are adorned with candles, dried herbs, coin, and pieces of carved whalebone known to possess a blessing from the void. It is not known if any item beyond the latter makes a tangible difference to the shrine's power. Nevertheless, it is through these ritualized sites that contact with the outsider is thought possible. However, many such attempts are failures. Long are the lists of potential incantations, sacrificial animals, and bodily fluids which are said to compel the outsider to appear. None are successful. But yet, there remain scattered, first-hand accounts of people bearing on their flesh what is known colloquially as the Outsider's Mark, which we recognize as the, as the symbol engraved in Whalebone Runes, seemingly communing with these altars and, when they wake, are able to recount specifics of the Outsider's voice and appearance, which do not vary substantially in their description. Of the dead god. It's watching me. It's been a part of me since this all started. It's cold. Dead. But it still sees. I can see everything, the void, like looking under the waves and into the sea. How long has the outsider been drowning at the heart of the void? Twenty-fifth, month of rain. What I do, I do for the sake of my studies. The risks are great, but it was never in my nature to leave questions unanswered. Everything must be revealed in time. The others may judge me, but that same desire exists in their own hearts. They are simply too cowardly to pursue it. The only means to the ritual hold lies in pieces, suspended at the moment in time in which that ancient gate was shattered. I will break the oldest and most sacred dictates of our order by simply approaching it and to attempt to trespass. I do not know if I will succeed, but I must try. Whatever happens to my body, I know that my research is hidden in a safe place in my cell. My life has led to this moment. My wasted youth in the Academy of Natural Philosophy, my time with the Eyeless, my years in this sanctum. And now I may finally uncover the secrets of the ancient language. Aha. Uh -huh. it again? Not yet. Okay. More than an eye, 
that is because it's like part of an actual base. Mm hmm. Big base. That's why it's the eye of a dead god. Whoa. I was spotted. That will not do. It simply will not do. It's been a part of me since this all started. It's cold. Dead. But it still sees. I can see everything. The void. Like looking under the waves and into the sea. How long has the outsider been drowning at the heart of the void? Try that again. It would seem that, uh... Non-lethal takedowns are not an option here. For those guys. This isn't a different place, this is the same place. Nope. 
I was seen. Hey, Adam. <clears throat> Not too bad. I think I'm pretty near the end of this right here. I think that guy's stuck. I'm going to look something up to see if I can make things easier on me. Because the reason that I haven't just dealt with those things is because I'm wondering... Since my next goal involves understanding the language of the Void, if they might be more than just obstacles once I achieve that. Like if they might be interactable somehow.
Okay. So yeah, if I'm going for a no-kill run, I can't... I can't... do anything about the invasion. I have to find a way... to... perhaps distract them. Go take a look in the other direction. So while this looked a little bit like it might have been. How long has a the outsider end? been drowning at the heart of the void? It also looks like there is stuff here. Okay. I'm thinking that's not a viable route. New initiates to our fellowship are required to perform menial tasks for the upkeep of their seat. 
of their and senior members' living conditions. These include, but are not limited to, laundering sanitation and waste disposal, meal preparation, recording dictation and copying notes, maintenance of technical equipment, record keeping, and collation. Whatever your station was in your life, you are now a custodian of the eye, a revenant of the outsider, and a member of our privileged community. Together, we watch the ages pass with impunity. Together, we maintain the delicate position of reality. Know that in time, the void will open up its truth to you, and all who seek it with fervor. that the mark of the outsider this one was obsessed like all the rest what did he find out the topography of the void is dependent upon reality to supply the base material for it to mirror however there is one place that has no referent in our world though i know the void sees into our hearts my fellows call it the ritual hole some say it is a cradle, others say a tomb. The outsider himself resides there. To even approach the gate to that place is sacrilege. And even then, the void itself keeps it shut to living eyes. Truly, the ritual hold exists outside of time itself. It would be as futile as it is forbidden to enter. These are thoughts for another time. My research into this ancient alphabet continues. Some remnants of their phonemic qualities are preserved in our oldest writings. The language possesses an unusual amount of diphthongs, reliant on distinction in tone and pitch to convey meaning. Ch the sh these symbols, <coughs> I know the very nature of the void runs through them, but is it a dead language or the language of the dead? Perhaps that could be the title of my next monograph. Second month of darkness. I am now certain of the meaning of that script adorning the flesh of those few who encounter the outsider. It is his name, the name he lost when he emerged with the when he merged with the void. And if this name is returned to him, the old ritual performed by the, the envisioned years ago would be undone. This revelation sends shivers down my spine. What I hold is the catalyst that could undo everything our collegiate has accomplished. Eleventh month of high cold. The ancient language tantalizes me still. The pronunciation was never formed for any earthly tongue. Perhaps these people long ago spoke with the spirits? But speculation is one of the many pitfalls which threatens the errant philologist. To pursue this further would necessitate transgressing the deepest commandment of our order. No one has entered the ritual hold since the outsider merged with the void. But to find one of those cursed spirits to read this language, it intrigues and frightens me in equal measure. 27th Month of High Cold Against all caution, all prudence, all sense of loyalty, I persist. I cannot abandon my research. This place, this reliquary that holds the outsider's true form, calls to me. If my plan to enter the ritual hold is found out, all is lost. What? The mark is the outsider's name. And this says only spirits in the void can read it. And so the note writes it down. <laughs>
here. I can feel it. Whales. Well, a whale. No, there's two. No, no. Choice. I had a choice. <laughs> I see Bring each moment of my life fish. slipping from my fingers. He was my brother. He was my brother. Now there is no one. No one at all. <laughs> Take me back. I want to go back. Soil underneath my fingernails. It's down. Down. Why are you here? What are you? Look at us. Trapped here. An eternity on a butcher's block. Waiting for the knife to fall. There's nothing left of me but this. Doubt. I'm here. Look at me. I know that name. I know you. And with blood. And masks and blades raised. Billy Lurk. I need to remember when you hated me. And now you followed me into the void itself. You brought the knife. I can't hurt him. There's nothing I can do. Only you can kill him. How long have I waited here? Too long, old man. There he is. 
the outsider. All this time dreaming in the void. I wonder if he dreamed about this moment. Go finish it. End his miserable life. He almost looks like he's in pain. Is this really what you want? Is this really what he deserves? You know how this ends, Billy. I hear their fingernails inside the walls. The noise, the noise, I hear it. You're all here with me forever. You're all mine. <laughs> <laughs> I will always hate you for what you did. <laughs> I fed his heart to the hounds. White teeth pulling it apart. White teeth stained black. The blood is thick. I spread it on my thighs. You ruined me. I found another way. The Outsider lived and breathed once. He spent his days on the streets of some forgotten city. These cultists took everything away from him. Even his name. But I know what it is. His name is the Mark. Only the dead can read it. If we give that back to him, we'll be free. He'll live out the rest of his days as a man like any other. The Mark? No. You're here to kill him. You can't ask me to do this, Billy. Not after everyone he's hurt. Not after everything we've done. Why is he to blame for what we did? He gave us a way to fight back. He never lied to us about what we might become. You know what I became. We looked down on Dunwall as if we owned it. As if we could drown it in blood. Wow. He knew we'd turn into monsters like him. He always knew. And his belly. He can't do anything but harm. I saw the cult who hurt him. He died once at their hands. Look at him. This wasn't his choice. He never asked for this power. Let him end it. Put him out of his misery if you pity him. It's a better future than anything that might wait for him out there. But does he have to die? Years ago, I did something terrible to you. I didn't deserve to live. But you let me walk away. You gave me a chance. Let him live, Dow. Let him have the life he lost. Like you did for me. When you left Dunwall, I hoped you could live a better life without me. That your future wouldn't be killing for coin until someone came to betray you. Forgiveness is a rare thing in this world, Billy. You're better than I was.
You have done something impossible. We let you live. I can take you out of here. These eyes were closed for centuries. And I saw everything. Bound here, I walked through the minds of generations. And now... You're free. I can't take back what was done to you all those years ago. No more than I can take back what was done to me. But now you have a chance to be something new. To be something better. It must be strange, knowing what you know. Seeing with old eyes all the secrets of the world. We've both seen the worst in people's hearts. But in the end, I gave Dowd peace. And maybe you can find some too. There's so much doubt. But there are some things I know are true. The Outsider is no more, and with that, the world will change in ways none of us can know. But the Void is still there, echoing just beyond what you can see. And there's no one left to say who will and won't be touched by its magic. Thanks. I'll have to start something new tomorrow. I wonder if there's anything waiting after the credits. I mean, it's only right to to see the the credits anyway to to acknowledge all the hard work that went into the game. I think tomorrow I'm going to be starting Darksiders. I hadn't played it before. It's been in my backlog forever. And yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? I don't remember exactly how many I have left. Uh, if you're not all on there already, I can recommend the site Backloggery to help track it. It's, it's what I've been using for the past several years. Excuse me. Because, you know, I used to have a problem with kind of just starting a game, 
getting distracted, leaving off, not knowing where, and not remembering where I was at all the next time I came back to it. And backloggery helps me keep track of, okay, I've started this one, I've played some of this one. You can leave notes on your progress if you want to, or you can just uh, use it to... What's the word that I'm thinking of? Why am I blanking on this word? Discipline. To exercise some discipline in... Uh, in actually completing games. Now, of course, not every game in my backlog is something that I intend to... Or, but... I, I should say not every game in my collection is something that I intend to beat. Because, well, for one, some are just not beatable. They're, they're not that kind of game. Uh, some I gave up on, basically. Oh. High strength of color, the beggar no more To become what the believers waited for They set him outside beyond the spheres Quiet as the night, long like the years He opened his eyes, as black as a dream Trying to speak his only words A scream Really? Thy golden locks, Gloriana, let the warm summer breeze roll sway. Lie with me in bright sun, silken dresses, and on free plurals of youth while ye may. What was I saying? All right, so some games are just sufficiently not my cup of tea, not the sort of thing that I want to take the time to get good at, good enough at to beat. Because then once I've beaten it, it's... Okay, on to something else. And frequently those... Th those kinds of games, when you beat them, are either... Okay, either they're really satisfying... Or really unsatisfying. There's not really any middle ground there. Either you put in all the effort and it feels awesome to beat, or you put in all the effort and the end just leaves you feeling like you wasted all that. Yeah, wasted all of it. Good games can balance that. You know?
overall. That they, they uh, the, the gameplay was enjoyable without being overly frustrating. Uh, some parts got a little bit frustrating at times, but I I feel like part of that might might have just been my own. Uh, obstinance in how I approached problems. And the, the further I got in them, the more I... The meadow grass that low and sweet Beneath the marching soldier's feet Bugles called in the glen strong and brave When he came back she made no sound but lies a night of broken ground Where ox rush blooms upon his grave Uh, yeah, the, the, the more I found myself, like, you know... I mean, yeah, the, the, the deeper I got, but, uh, the... Uh the more I found myself exploring other options, other approaches to the same instances, rather than being like, okay, I want to progress this way specifically, let's make that happen, and very carefully, just like, straight hole, you know, rather than uh, finding the actual path of least resistance, which could be any direction from where I was. So yeah, as, as like a... Uh, when I started approaching it as a puzzle to solve rather than a problem to work through, it got a lot easier. Which was, you, at the same time, the, that that change in difficulty as I changed my approach, that was also kind of satisfying in its own way, you know? It's not like, oh, now it's easy, now it's 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 a pushover, I, I don't feel any satisfaction from doing it. No, quite the opposite. It's like, I, I found the way the game wants me to play, and I get to feel super stealthy and badass doing it, so so I like it. And yeah, like, the, the whole lore of everything was through the games just really interesting. I like it. Uh, the endings themselves the endings themselves narratively were a little disappointing like the, the it's it's just a uh, uh, a fade to sepia epilogue kind of thing but that that's that's okay you know that that doesn't bother me Anyway, that'll do it for me today. Come back tomorrow. Aiming for 3 p.m. Eastern as always. Probably showing up late. Like today was about two hours late. Ugh. And yes, Darksiders begins tomorrow. Uh... Definitely a different sort of game. Still a very grim tone. I should probably mix that up at some point. Play something a little less uh, gritty. Like maybe at, maybe after I finished Darksiders. If I don't feel like moving on to Darksiders 2 right after. Like if... Uh, Nah, not not Animal Crossing. I still don't have a Switch. 
And even if I did, I still don't have a way to capture video from uh, from consoles. FF7 Remake would be cool, but I doubt my computer's ability to both play the game and stream it simultaneously. This thing's getting on in years. Like, uh, the, the last few days have been just fine playing Dishonored, but uh, this one and Dishonored 2 were both giving me a lot of blue screens for a while. Probably something like uh, uh, Shantae, I was thinking. Could be fun. I've heard lots of good things about that. But that's... We'll see how I'm feeling after Darksiders, which... I don't know how long Darksiders is. I don't know how long it'll last me. I could be feeling entirely different by the time I actually get there. So anyway, thanks again. Hope to see you tomorrow, or any of the other times that I'm on. Uh, good evening. Later, everybody.